I was brought up on a farm at Walgett. We had 10,000 acres of Western land lease. It was just different Western country, but I always loved nature. Five Corners wasn't originally always called Five Corners. It was part of Strathvillan Station. Now Strathvillan Station has been, was been cut up into several blocks and this block was the last bush block to be sold. I virtually looked around at first and I thought, mm, what am I going to call it? Well, originally then there was a bush on it called Five Corners. I thought, hmm, well, it's got Five Corners, but I'll call it Five Corners. So that's how it happened. It got called Five Corners, but of course, a lot of people say, oh no, I went out to Four Corners the other day. <laughs> so that's it, yeah. 2003, I purchased it and then the development started in 2004 up to today. I said to the agent, look, I can't give you an answer now. I've got to walk the boundaries. And he looked at me so stupid, what's this friggin' woman want to walk the boundaries for? But when I walked the boundaries, I realised that what a wonderful opportunity for education because it's all turned upside down with sapphire mining. Then the other third of it's been heavily logged for sleepers and firewood. But the other third's never been touched. And I thought, what a brilliant thing. Fauna and flora surveys. 2006, Phil Spark and Wendy Hawes helped me win my first one. Amazing amount of animals, from bats to geckos, frogs, and also your arboreals, like your squirrel glider, sugar glider, feather glider, etc. Then I did another one in 2011 with her help of Alex Dudley and Wendy again. We found that the original species were, were absolutely sustained, but we found extras. We found three more geckos, two more frogs, and we found, again, the feather glider, glider which had never been found before. My treasure is nature and preserving it and teaching people what to do and how, how to handle animals and how to think how I have insight into what that animal's got to, to do to cope with its absolute survival. And I thank God that I was brought up in the bush. And my dream would be to have every child have six months from the time they're probably 12 to 14. No books, no nothing, absolutely nothing. What they do, they have to grow their own vegetables, they have to fence, they have to handle animals, they have to drench, they have to help with shearing, have to do all that. And that will give them the different insight and the value of appreciation of nature and what it gives you if you look after it. We put one out on a little friend of ours property out there. And while we were putting the drink out, we got out of the back of my ute and we put standing it up and the koala's sitting there in the tree watching us. <laughs> Jenny said, look at him. I said, yeah, yeah. Oh, this one. I went to the koala arc meeting. We got talking about drinkers and koalas and wildlife. So then it started from there. So then I said, look, John, can I, can I buy one of them? He said, yeah, that's fine. So he brought one to, to up here um, and we put it up there and, and that's the story where we I fiddled and fixed it so that it was become um, an actual wildlife drinker, not specifically for koalas, but for everybody, all of wildlife. So that's how it went from there, yeah. Side's not, you have a look, set. Totally Red. redesigned all this. And this is the check valve here, and that's a bushfire connection, stores connecting, but you can also have a garden quick connect there as well. And this is fills up the top of the 200 litres, plus it's your, your uh, sight glass as well, for, so you can drive past and just keep an eye on it and see whether you've got to fill it up or not easily from the road. Most of them are set up on the road, aren't they, surely? Yeah. So we redesigned all this, put a bigger platform in, put the carpet on the top there for the birds. And, uh, these troughs are terrific. They work really good. Mm, yeah, they're, they're gravity feed troughs, so they, they work very well. 
this is a reserve and, and there's an intense, you know, a lot of animals here, whereas a lot of property, I guess, there's not that many. But we're, at the moment, we're in a green patch where it's been raining really well, filled up all the dams everywhere and that sort of thing. But <laughs> next year, the following year, we're going back into a drought. That's Australia. You know, the Darling River, since the late 1800s, has dried up 49 times. Now this is the 50th or 51st time. So it's not like the Darling River's flowed all its life. It hasn't. Australia's the dry continent, the driest continent in the world. So we're going to go. It's lovely now, and you go here. What, 12, 18 months ago, Shirley's place here was as bare as that. It wasn't. We are all worried the trees are all dying, that they've, you know. And now we've had all this lovely rain. But in the future, it's going back to a dry situation. This is where, you know, we've got to set up for supporting the animals. This tree is special because it holds six and a half litres of water. Now, when I'm going bushwalking now, I'm always looking for this bulge. It's on both sides of your tree, and that will tell me, oh, there might be water in there. So you go up. I've got another tree like this, but unfortunately it leaks, but it's still got this bulge, and perhaps way down in the bottom of the tree is a water container, but the top spills out. But this one is wonderful and has been used for obviously many years because this tree, goodness knows how old it'd be, but the fact that it's a narrow-leafed ironbark and the fact that, that it's so important because the animals use it so much, therefore that's why I put the drinker here to, to substitute. You know, if this went dry or I couldn't fill it up, they could have the, have the drinker. It's led to so many discoveries of the, what, the squirrel glider, the sugar glider, the feather glider, the frog, the microbat, and the little skink. Yeah. And then yeah. the goanna going up. Often koalas are seeing here, there might be only a single one, but it'll be in the Blakely Eye red gum, which is the common red gum which grows along Fraser's Creek. Its leaves are sweet because it's near moisture, having being along the creek, so therefore the koalas like it. First of all, observation. Your powers of observation are brilliant. Now, also knowing the type of tree, but stop pushing them over. I know you could, you're allowed to land clear, but please land clear. I'm not against land clearing, but you've got to do it properly. You've got to know the species of tree in your area that are most frequented by koalas. Then as soon as you see a koala, goodness sakes, let, let the powers that be know. So that's very, very important. As soon as you see one, keep your dogs away. Tie them up. Don't chase them. If you can, your cattle will also investigate and chase them, believe it or not. They will chase them up a tree. But often koalas are on the ground, they're either looking for water or they're going from tree to tree. So that's another thing. If you see your cattle looking at something, and animals, you learn a lot from animals, because they'll tell you what's there. If you see them looking at something, go and have a look to see what they're looking at. That's the best thing. Just go quietly, but keep your dog away. Otherwise, finish. You won't, you won't see the koala, he's gone. He's probably been, or dead, with the dog. So that's my suggestions, yeah. Through learning the value of this iconic animal. Now, it's an absolutely the cutest thing, and it brings millions of dollars into Australia just from tourism, because people love cuddling a koala but also the species of tree. Please save the species of tree that are, that are edible by koalas in your area. They vary with the area. There's different over the coast, they're different here, they're different to out near Copper Creek. Those species of trees, please don't bulldoze them. Keep them.